On Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 48, you're gonna learn about an off-the-grid inlay artist, a blues musician that conjures up old spirits, a handmade pick from Nashville, Tennessee, and our capo conversation continues and gets a surprise visitor. The things are heating up. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 48. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best and very boldest acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. But before we dive into that geekiness, I've got a little bit of, well, Acoustic Tuesday tradition that we have to tend to, and that's known as Guitar Geek Trivia. Here is your Guitar Geek Trivia question. In what year did Martin Guitars officially introduce the M body shape, otherwise known as a quadruple O? Was it A, 1967, B, 1964, C, 1977, or D, 1984? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I will be sure to give you the answer. Now, let's settle into Acoustic Tuesday episode number 48. We are nearing episode number 52, and I can't believe it because that means Acoustic Tuesday has been around officially for a year. And of course, making Acoustic Tuesday run and jump, do jumping jacks, push-ups, and all of those things is none other than Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first. Noah, cheers to you, buddy. How are you doing? Tony, I am doing well. I see what you did there with the push-ups mm-hmm, and... Uh, mm-hmm. And the jumping jacks and all that stuff. Noah's been working out behind the scenes. Yes, I have. In Acoustic Life Studios' basement, known as uh, Noah's Powerhouse Gym. If that's what you want to call it. Well, I mean, I'm surprised. So I just wanted to dive right into what I'm drinking, even though you didn't ask, ask oh, me at all. Tony, what are you drinking? Well, I'm drinking a uh, 10-year bullet bourbon. And I, because Noah's been working out, when he pulled the cork off of this today, he actually broke it off and it fell in the bottle. And I think it's because of his his new biceps. I thought doing. it was a special edition bourbon. You know, with, like tequila comes with the worm with a bobber you, in it. Yeah, you get you get your special edition <laughs> bourbon with a piece of the cork in it. Actually, I I told a fall. I I told a lie. I actually broke the cork off. Noah didn't. Noah was amazed at my strength. Uh, so that's how that happened. What are you uh, delighting yourself with today, here, Noah? Yeah. So no, you know, nothing new today, Tony. Mm-hmm. Today I'm drinking the. Uh, the trusty old Port Charlotte, uh, heavily peated nice. from Bruick Laddie Distillery, in Isla, of course. Because well, is there is there any other kind of Scotch? I know there is, but Isla is my choice. Yeah, bourbon. That's the other kind that you never mention. Correct. But <laughs> Tony, this is not about imbibing. This it's is about, about my hair. How's my hair look? It's good. No. <laughs> this is about a, just guitar geekiness. All over the place. Well, let's dive in then, because I've got some really cool... I've actually got some really cool Acoustic Tuesday viewer recommendations today. Two of the items that I'm going to share with you come from Acoustic Tuesday viewers. They submitted them on AcousticLife.tv. They went to AcousticLife.tv, hit the Submit button in the top menu, and submitted some really cool things. And the first comes from Dr. Dave B. from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Dr. Dave is a... Tony's Acoustic Challenge lifetime member. He's also an Acoustic Tuesday fanatic and and registered guitar geek. And Dr. Dave introduced me to an inlay artist that I cannot wait to share with you. Okay, because first of all, when you think about inlay, you think about, well, you just think about it being done. At least I do. I I, I don't now, but I did before. I, I just thought about you get a guitar, it has beautiful inlay, and away you go. It's just a beautiful thing. Well, there's a man that's been pretty much dedicating his life to inlay and custom inlay. In fact, uh, his company is called Custom Pearl Inlay, and his name is David Nichols. Now, David Nichols uh, lives a little bit south of Malone, New York. We're talking way upstate New York, in a small community, and there he has his guitar shop, and he does some absolutely incredible work. I'm talking about absolutely stunning stuff. Now, before I dive in any further, I found a really great interview with David Nichols about uh, just his craft and and how he approaches it and kind of the fun things that he does with it. And I want you to take note of the guitar he's playing and look at the inlay work on it. That was all done by him. 
So let's, uh, without further ado, let's hear from David Nichols. A lot of people figure that my most famous guitar is the one that I did for Johnny Cash, but to me, uh, I did a Lucille for B.B. King, and we did two of them, and one of those he gave to the Pope uh, two popes ago, and I've got one in the Vatican, and it's a constant uh, call from who's who in music to get something fancy or get something fixed. My name is David Nichols, and I have a good time making very fancy instruments. Typical day in my life starts about five o'clock in the morning. I'm in the shop from uh, usually before seven until I quit at four. I've, I've been giving up a little earlier nowadays. And during this time of the year, we teach either inlay or guitar building classes on a weekly basis, start on Monday and on Friday. We make a lot of guitars for people that have two or three guitars or more in their collection, but want something over the edge and they're at a point in their life where they can afford it. We have an inlay room where we handle the delicate inlay. We're using seashell, abalone shell, mother of pearl shell. We use some plastics, we use uh, bone, we use ivory. As much as it's important for me to teach my craft, it's important for me to remember where I started. I learned more at Canton about education than I did at any other point in my career. It was the foundations for me being where I am. When I'm gone, the only thing I have left is that which I've passed on and taught. And I would like my craft to carry on past myself because when I'm gone, I'm gone. So not only does Mr. Nichols do astoundingly beautiful inlay work, I mean, for the likes of B.B. King, Johnny Cash, you heard the names in the video, but he also teaches. If you check out his website, which of course you can get to through AcousticLife.tv, just click on episode 48 and you will see a whole write-up on David Nichols and all the cool stuff he does. If you go to his website through there, you'll see that he offers classes. He teaches inlay. I want to say the cost for the inlay class is around $800. Don't, don't quote me on that. I'm just going by memory here. But um, go to AcousticLife.tv and click on the David Nichols uh, review, the Custom Pearl Inlay Review, and you'll be able to find out all the details on that. And there's also a guitar building course that he offers. I believe that was for somewhere around $1,200, which is pretty cool. I mean, he's uh, what a multifaceted, cool dude. And he's a great musician on top of that and, and, and a hell of a nice guy. So I want to thank Dr. Dave B. Uh, for recommending recommending uh, David Nichols to us here on Acoustic Tuesday. What a cool, what a cool treat. And just to um, I talk about an ultimate guitar geek. I mean, I was looking through some of the inlay patterns and things on his site and they're just gorgeous. In fact, I would strongly recommend checking out the gallery of custom work that he's done because that alone, I mean, if you're sitting at work and you got nothing to do, that, that'll eat up a good hour, hour and a half. Just check out the custom gallery. Your jaw will be on the floor. There will be drool. There will be guitar geek dreams just happening right there. So again, check out David Nichols of Custom Pearl Inlay. You're going to be very happy that you did. Now I want to move on here. I've got to. Uh, I've got some cool stuff. So um, this capo conversation that we've we kind of started last episode on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 47, where I talked about the G7th Heritage capo, kind of started. Well, it started something. We'll get to that a little bit later. I want to check the mailbag though because some really cool stuff came in. I'm talking some really cool stuff. We've got, uh, we got a, a package from Mark Kramer, and he says this in his included letter. Thank you for the great show I've been watching since episode one, and I appreciate the education. Included is a little something to send to Guitars for Vets on behalf of Acoustic Life TV. He sent $100 to Guitars for Vets, which is pretty awesome. So thank you, Mark. Uh, that goes a long way for those folks. So thank you for sending this. He says, I'm a retired vet, and I really appreciate your taking the time to help them heal. Absolutely. We're all doing it. So thanks for the, the letter and the uh, donation, Mark. That will certainly go to Guitars for Vets. He said, Tony, thank you for the review of the Flow Pick. I purchased several of them, and they are now one of my favorite picks. In appreciation, I included one in my favorite color for you. And here it is. It's going in the pick cup. Thank you very much, Mark. And he also included a, you know you're a guitar geek when. He says, you know you're a guitar geek when. You want to help someone at the cash register with some pocket change. When you reach into your pocket, you pull out three picks and a tube of chapstick. 
which is a very real occurrence and phenomenon for us guitar geeks. He also shares a small win here in uh, analog form, if I can if I can say that. Sorry, I don't mean to steal your thunder, Noah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> he shares a small one. He says, took the time to research, design, and build a 2x12 speaker cabinet, and the results are way better than I hoped for. You'll see this in an upcoming guitar arsenal. And yes, I already own the shirt. Awesome, Mark. I'm super pumped. And in closing, he says, I included a bag of one of my favorite coffees, which as soon as I opened the box here, it was pretty amazing. Bourbon Street Coffee from Pura Bean. He goes on to describe it. I'll see if I can position that up there. Uh, He says, I included the bag of one of my favorite coffees, Bourbon Street from Pura Bean Coffee Company. Hope you guys have time to brew and consume some of the bourbon coffee during an upcoming show so you can let the listeners know how it smells and tastes. P.S. Sorry, Noah and Levi, they don't have a scotch recipe yet. Then there's probably a reason for that. Uh, Just wanted to throw that in there. Mark didn't write that. He also says, guys, keep up the great work and thanks for all you do. So thanks, Mark, for the package, the care package and the coffee. And I can tell you by the smell of it, it smells truly amazing uh, because, of course, it has bourbon uh, undertones to it. Do you think there's a cork in it? Hopefully not because my history with corks is not so good right now. (laughs) It's pretty bad, actually. (laughs) And I got another, uh, I I got something in the mailbag. Noah, can I please share this? Yeah, you're on a roll. So, at the Acoustic Life Festival, Matt from Eddie's Guitars came. Eddie's Guitars in St. Louis of the Ask Matt section segment of Acoustic Tuesday. Um, we started geeking out about guitars, and we started talking about Preston Thompson guitars. And I told him, oh, how I longed for a Preston Thompson dreadnought. Just a simple, classy, 18-style dreadnought. And uh, upon uh, Matt's return to St. Louis, he said, hey, Tom. He called me. He says, you would not believe what I just got in. I got in a uh, Cuban mahogany Preston Thompson Dreadnought with an Adirondack spruce top, inch and three quarter bone nut, just a kind of a classic golden era style uh, 18 series guitar. And I said, wow, that's something else. So then Matt proceeded to send me a video of him demoing it. He made the video especially for me because he knew how much I wanted this guitar. And then we got to talking on the phone and uh, between um, the guitar geek Geeks uniting and everything. Uh, well, lo and behold, what showed up? Preston Thompson, 18 style guitar um, that I just am in love with. I, I've, I've saved up my shekels to get this. I've always had this in mind. And uh, as soon as Matt said it was available, I was blown away. It's just, it's a beast of a guitar. I could play it on and on and on. I absolutely love the thing. Uh, and I want to thank Matt specifically. Now, Matt's a, Matt's a dear friend of us here at Acoustic Tuesday, a dear personal friend of mine. Um, but I want to thank Matt because he really goes the extra mile. For any of you considering a guitar or wanting something custom or just want to chat guitar and, and try and find something that you'll like, Matt is your guy. Again, he's at Eddie's Guitars. And um, just my experience being an Eddie's Guitars customer was exceeded all of my expectations. Uh, so I wanted to pass that on. And I also, on Matt's behalf, wanted to thank everybody, all the Acoustic Tuesday viewers, everybody who shared the word of Matt's GoFundMe page. He has since, uh, since we announced his GoFundMe, unbeknownst to him, he has since actually met his goal, um, which is awesome. He actually exceeded his goal. People are continuing to donate, which is awesome because Matt wants to record an album of his original tunes. I've heard them. They sound amazing. I selfishly want the album, so I just want to say uh, thank you to all the Acoustic Tuesday viewers who, who contributed to Matt and spread the word about his album. So that's, that's pretty awesome. So all around, uh, well, I guess I should thank Matt, too, because he made that guitar possible. And no one knows I've just been talking about it. I just keep saying there's a beast inside this guitar. There's a beast. Not so much, what, are this, what is this guy's name? The Hodag? The Hodag. I almost call him the Hogwarts. <laughs> I've never even seen that, that Harry Potter movie. But I know Hogwarts is a thing. It's okay. Okay, so that's the mailbag, Noah. Yeah. Did you get anything? No. Mm. I I didn't. But I'm just <laughs> super excited that Matt no longer has an excuse not to make an album. And I am looking forward to that. I agree with that statement. Absolutely 100%. Should we keep going? Yes, please. Okay. Talking about albums and music, let's let's uh, let's dive into what I'm listening to this week. And this week, this recommendation comes courtesy of an Acoustic Tuesday viewer named... Now, I, I went back and forth on how to pronounce this, but I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to own it. Uh, Stefan Cotton from New York, New York. 
and he says about this mystery artist, she's one of the best blues guitar players around today. And who's he talking about? Well, he is talking about none other than Rory Block. Rory Block is one of those performers that when you see her play, you feel like you've just transported in a time machine back to roots blues. I'm talking about Mississippi Delta blues. Watching her play, it's almost as if she becomes possessed. I'm talking like exorcist style possessed. Not so much the spinning head and the, and the pea soup vomit, but just watching her play and sing. She's so into it. She's so in the moment. Her tone is just, just harkens back to the Mississippi Delta. And uh, she, is, she has a vast knowledge of the blues, its history, its roots, who played what, when they played what, and she plays it to a T. And she also plays her own stuff as well. I don't want to take anything away from her own creations. Uh, she's just a fantastic artist, and I think you all need to know about her. So I want to thank Stefan Cotton from New York, New York, for recommending Rory Block. In fact, I found a great selection of her playing Terraplane Blues, and uh, we'll, uh, there's even a special guest with a, a cat. You'll see what I'm talking about. Here, here it comes. I just want to say that this cat right over here stayed right here in the same spot sitting there during all the performances and hasn't moved. So this is a blues cat. So you should definitely catch this. Terraplane blues. Oh, I feel so long. Been driving my tail plane for you since I've been gone. I said I'll flash my lights day. Oh, this home won't even blow. I said I'll flash my lights day. Oh, this home won't even blow. Got a shot in this connection. Yeah, baby, way down. As you can see, her right hand technique is just, it's ridiculously off the charts awesome. I mean, it conjures up the, the blues and spirit, all the mojo, it's all there. Now, Rory has a, a plethora of albums available and it's almost hard to, to figure out where to start. So I, I just created a quick list that I wanted to share with you all, just kind of a, a I don't know, a quick guide to Rory Block, if you will. Uh, so the first two albums that I'd love for you to check out are entitled Best Blues and Originals. Uh, volume one, obviously that's the first one, and then <laughs> volume two. Um, both of those albums are great just because it's it's very early Rory Block. So you get a good taste of uh, kind of what, what she sounded like when she first started creating albums. Next up is High Heeled Blues. Now, this album in particular is a blast to listen to. I found this album at a thrift store at one point, and uh, I was blown away that I found it. And I was super happy to, uh, to have it on vinyl. I was just really excited. Uh, that's a stellar album. Uh, next up, uh, I've got a, some notes here. Uh, Avalon, which is a tribute to Mississippi John Hurt. So it's Rory Block playing Mississippi John Hurt tunes. Uh, and again, just doing them the, just the, the highest honor. Really just, just um, having just the utmost reverence for the song. And also in that same vein is a, a, a record entitled I Belong to the Band. That's her tribute to Reverend Gary Davis. Like I said, she is steeped in the blues. And last but certainly not least, I wanted to share with you that she also teaches uh, that very unique style, and she has a, a specific DVD on teaching the style of Robert Johnson, which I've seen little clips of on YouTube, and it's just uh, it's awesome because she 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 nails it. She nails the style. It's it's like I said, if you close your eyes, you're like, whoa, what what year are we in? So again, that's Rory Block, and I want to thank. Uh, Stefan Cotton from New York uh, for recommending that we here at Acoustic Life Studios and of course you as an Acoustic Tuesday viewer uh, listen to Rory Block. She's pretty amazing and uh, definitely I think your your record collection would smile if you brought some of her records home and uh, you know put them in the shelves and all that good stuff. We'll play them first and then and then put them in the shelves. You know what I'm talking about, Noah? Yeah. You play it first and then you yeah. Yep. 
I'm going to stop talking at that point. And actually, I'm going to let you talk because I know that you, there's some shout outs from previous episodes. Correct. And there's some comments you'd like to share, some witty ones, and some not witty ones, serious ones. Do we have any serious ones? Yeah. Well, let's see. You know we'll what? Let's see what we got today. I'm, I'm here to listen. I'm ready for the some shout outs and some comments from uh, recent Acoustic Tuesday viewers. First one comes from Don. And uh, Don says, as usual, watching belatedly from Boston. Uh, next <laughs> That's one. That's like a Dear Abby, belated from Boston. Yeah, no. that's true. <laughs> I like that. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs> next one comes from a regular Acoustic Tuesday viewer and commenter, VW Beetle, 72 Jelly Bean. And uh, he says, hey, man, thanks for the shout out. Um, still want to see you share that vlog from CME. With our guitar geek peeps. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm sure you we know what you're talking that, about yeah, there. Yeah, the Chicago Music Exchange uh, video tour. It's really cool. Actually, I'll, I'll feature that in an upcoming episode because it's um, it's really cool. Because okay. we'll walk through the city. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. It's okay. And then, <laughs> and then he throws in there, you know you're a guitar geek when you get halfway through AT47 while eating your lunch at work and realize you were engrossed in AT, or you realize that you were so engrossed in Acoustic Tuesday that you forget you had a one o'clock meeting. <laughs> um, obviously, he's later like on the East Coast. Yeah, and, yeah, I'm watching late. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, thank you. Next one comes from KCK. That's cool. Yeah, that KCK. is cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out from Fort Wayne, Indiana, right. who also has a small win. See, Tony, here, yeah. here's, here's the thing we're kind of running into. Okay, t is, talk to me is that folks, they want to share everything. So, yeah. so they're giving a shout out where they're from. They're making a comment. And sometimes they're including a small win. And, and you know you're a guitar geek win. It's and all, you know it's you're a guitar there. geek win. Yeah. So I'm just kind of, they come in all together. I'm kind of sharing them all together. I love it. So Casey from Fort Wayne, Indiana says, small win. I am a father of three boys under the age of three. And after two years of being patient, my wife told me, get the guitar I've been wanting for over two years. And so I finally got a Seagull Artist Studio Concert Hall. All right. This is so exciting. I can hardly wait the three months it takes to be handmade in Canada from only four luthiers. Killer. And a shout out to my beautiful Autumn for making me get something for myself. Love the show, and I'm inspired every day to write more and record, even if it's just through my phone for now. That's awesome. Cheers to the new guitar day, the small win. It sounds like there's a fam jam cooking in there somewhere. Oh, definitely. That's awesome. <clears throat> it was just chock full, so yeah. That's a, that's a juicy one. I like it. Yeah, that's our shout-outs and comments for today, Tony. Mm. Well, thank you for sharing those, Noah. Certainly appreciate it. And, of course, if you want your comment featured on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday, if you want your small win featured, if you want your You Know You're a Guitar Geek when featured, uh, please leave it in the comments below the YouTube video. Um, super easy. Just put hashtag small win, hashtag You Know You're a Guitar Geek when, whatever you want to contribute to the comments, we would love to hear from you. And, of course, include where you're tuning in from because it's really cool to read. i got to be honest. Even, even just briefly scrolling through, it's, it's crazy to see where all of you guitar geeks come from. It's, I mean, we're talking England, Australia, we've got uh, uh, the Philippines, we've got, uh, we've got Mexico, we've got uh, the United States, Canada. It's really, really cool. And, and you guys are doing a great job of helping Guitar Geeks Unite. So keep up the awesome work and please leave your comments. And of course, while you're at it, what I want you to do is to please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, it's really easy. Just click that red subscribe button. Don't forget to click the little bell. That'll give you a notification of every single video that gets released. And of course, if you want Acoustic Tuesday delivered directly to your email, that's super easy. Just click the link in the description and you will get Acoustic Tuesday delivered hassle-free to your email so you'll never miss an episode. Now, I want to keep going, Noah. Um, are you cool with that? Uh, yeah. Okay, because this one, this is a juicy one. This, I, I mean, I've, I feel like I've kind of been building it up, but I don't, it's so cool. It's hard for me to, un, to, to really unveil how cool it is. So of course I'm okay with you. Okay. I just wanted to okay. check. All right. uh, so here's the deal. We're going to talk capos. Okay. A lot of buzz around capos since the last episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Episode 47, I talked about the G7th Heritage capo and raised some questions. And I heard from a very special individual who I'm going to feature here in a little bit. But first, since we're on the topic of capos, I want to talk about a specific capo. This capo has been recommended to me time and time and time and time and time again. Everywhere I go online, I am chased by this capo. And I've actually had one of these capos for almost a year now. 
and I'm referring to the Thalia capo. And time and time again, people will say, Tony, you've got to try out the Thalia capo. You've tried, you, you, you featured Elliot capos, you featured G7th, the Heritage capo, you featured the G7th performance capo, the shove, the page, the you name it. Why haven't you featured the Thalia? Well, I wanted to give this a proper review. And, and, and what I like to do when products come in for a review, and we get, we get lots of products to review, I like putting the product through its paces. Uh, I like using it at gigs. I like using it during practice. I like putting it in my pocket, carrying it around, uh, because I want to put it through real world paces. I don't want to just pull it out of the box and say, hey, this is really neat, and then set it aside. I want to give you some insight into the actual product. Product, Hence, uh, the Thalia Capo. Now, just some background on the Thalia Capo. Thalia Capo was uh, founded, invented by uh, Chris Bradley and his daughter, Thalia. And the story goes as this. She was eight years old, sitting in her bedroom, looking at a poster of Taylor Swift playing a beautifully inlaid Koa guitar. And on that fretboard was a capo that just didn't match the aesthetic of her guitar. It was a beautiful guitar, beautiful inlay, and then all of a sudden, wham, capo right in your face. So they set out on a mission to develop an aesthetically pleasing capo, but an equally functioning and easily functioning capo. And I think they hit a home run. So my rundown of the Thalia capo, first of all, let me just say this. As a guitar geek, we love custom things. We love custom guitars, but when you can get an accessory such as the Thalia capo to match your guitar, that's a really cool feeling. And they do this in spades. I mean, they have different metal combinations. They have different, uh, rather I should say metal finishes, uh, different exotic wood, tone wood veneers that they use on the capo. They have uh, inlay options. I mean, you name it, they've got it. In fact, rather than me trying to explain everything, uh, I found a video that's real quick. It does a great job of explaining all of the different things that Thalia capos do. The Thalia Capo is an aesthetically fresh and innovative take on the guitar capo. Its reversed fulcrum point and quick release design allows for seamless one-handed key changes during the song, giving musicians new musical avenues never before possible. One important aspect of the Thalia Capo is the ability to completely customize it based on the needs of the player. Our interchangeable fret pads allow you to match it to your guitar's fretboard radius, guaranteeing a perfect fit. We offer six different metallic finish options and a variety of sustainably harvested wood and shell inlay choices, making the Thalia Capo the ultimate piece of functional guitar jewelry. All right, so that's kind of the inside scoop at what Thalia does, some custom options. You saw the different metal finishes and things like that. And I just love that. I mean, I love to be able to, without a capo that matches my guitar. Now I got, uh, a rosewood capo because I use this one on my Martin HD 35, or I've used it the most on my HD 35. And I, I've actually gigged with this capo quite a bit. Again, I wanna put things through their paces. So here's what I found. This is my experience of the Thalia capo. First of all, I wanna mention also that uh, Thalia capo was brought to life by Guitar Geeks. They did a Kickstarter some years back and they raised enough money to, to start the company, which in and of itself is ultra, ultra cool. Since then, they've done a couple different iterations. In fact, I have a video that will share some, uh, um, some of the new iterations they have, they have had since 2016. We'll get to that here in a second, but my experience with the Capo is this. Um, it's very easy to use. It's one hand operation, so that's incredible. Literally in your fretting hand, you can put it on your guitar neck, let it go, and away you go. The other thing that I love about it is, is it has these interchangeable fret pads, as you probably saw in that video. Um, they're really easy to change, so this makes it uh, basically adaptable to any guitar that you have. Uh, I have the 16 in there because I use it on a Martin guitar, but they have all sorts of different radius pads. Um, I mean, it comes with an entire bag of them uh, for classical guitar all the way to, to he more heavily radiused fingerboards. So just by having one capo in these pads, you can use the capo on many different guitars. Um, the other thing as I've kind of doted is that it's, it's highly customizable, which as a guitar geek, I find incredibly gratifying. Uh, one of the things about the fret pads, I wanna go back to the fret pads for a second, is that they um, don't lose them, okay? Because if you're using them on a bunch of different guitars, you can actually, uh, you can lose these and it would make it not available for certain guitars. So keep that in mind. Uh, so I love it. I, I think it creates a buzz-free uh, uh, capoing atmosphere, if there is such a thing. Uh, and again, very, very easy to use. Some things that I noticed that uh, I just want to make you aware of if you're considering a Thalia capo. 
uh, it's pretty. It's a pretty hefty capo. Um, it's it's very very weighty. Uh, in fact, noticeable when it's on the guitar neck. So keep that in mind. Um, and also because of its size, I found my fretting hand running into it uh, pretty frequently. Nothing that would necessarily take away from my playing or cause distraction. It's just something that I noticed that I wanted to share with you all. Uh, and I know that it's 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 probably a little bit beefier because it houses a whole entire mechanism that makes its operation so easy. So it's kind of a little bit of a trade-off, a little added weight, a little bit of added bulk for an easy to use mechanism. Uh, so that's kind of my rundown of the Thalia Capo. Now, as I mentioned, they, they started with the Thalia Capo, I think it's you know, version one or the 100, and they've, uh, in 2016, they revamped it to make it more accommodating for even more guitars and even easier to use. And I found a video on that, so I wanted to share that with you all. So let's have a look at that right now. The Thalia Capo 2, which we expect to begin shipping in early 2016, has received a significant number of upgrades and is a result of months of dedicated design and engineering effort. First, we extended the length of the capo and our fret pads so that we can accommodate wider guitar necks. This added length provides more leverage and also allows the capo to easily slide up to the 12th fret, even on guitars with very wide necks. Next, we reduce the profile height on our fret pads, which drops the capo closer to the fretboard of the guitar, reducing the potential for interference while playing. These lower profile fret pads also create a larger mouth opening, allowing the capo to fit on guitars with thicker than average necks. We also wanted to improve the usability of our tuning kit, so we redesigned our fret pads so that they can easily snap in and out of place without the use of adhesive tape. This gives you the ability to quickly swap out fret pads on the fly to fit any guitar in your collection. Adding additional protection for guitar necks was also a key design objective. So we redesigned the rubber neck pad so that it completely wraps around the pinch arm, ensuring that only rubber can come in contact with the guitar's neck, even if the capo is not fully depressed. And finally, to improve playability and ergonomics, we reduced the force required to squeeze the capo by more than 50%. This was achieved by preloading the spring, moving the fulcrum point, and lengthening the lever arm. These enhancements to our original design will improve overall fit, usability, ergonomics, durability, and aesthetics. The Thalia Capo 2, coming soon. So what I love about that video, and the reason why I wanted to share it is that you can see a company here that is striving to make their product better and better and better. And that, that in and of itself is just, just plain awesome. So again, those are Thalia Capos. These make great gifts. I received uh, one of these in a gift box, and it makes it, it as far as presentation and getting it for somebody for a, a birthday or, or whatever holiday you celebrate. Um, that that's just awesome. It's just a, it's presentate it, it, its presentation is is really beautiful. So again, those are Thalia Capos. I would strongly recommend checking them out. Them out. Uh, check out their site for the custom options. If you want to look at some of my favorites, go to AcousticLife.tv. There's links to buy a couple different capos, and of course, if you use those links through AcousticLife.tv, all of those proceeds go to Guitars for Vets, and that's with anything that I review here on Acoustic Tuesday. So just by being a guitar geek, you can help celebrate, help, uh, you can help support a guitar geek cause, which is pretty darn awesome if I do say so myself and again that's for everything at AcousticLife.tv. Now our capo conversation is not over because last week on Acoustic Tuesday episode number 47 I looked at the G7th Heritage Capo. Now I'm not out here I, I, I love good quality guitar products okay and I'm not here to say this one's the absolute best and all the other ones aren't. I'm just here to check these things out because I'm a geek and I like trying out different gear. I want to share with you the pros and cons of everything. And upon reviewing the G7th Heritage Capo, a couple of questions came up. And one was in regards to the play that was in the, uh, the top bar of the capo. And the other one was uh, uh, in regard to a nylon insert that they used on the capo. And I had asked just kind of very casually in the show um, if Nick, the owner of G7th Capo, would be so kind as to just address these questions to help us all understand. And man, Nick did it in, in a big way. Nick actually reached out right after the show aired last week. And he said, hey, let's hop on a call. I'd be glad to take your questions and just chat capos. So, you know, Nick is the equivalent 
uh, you know, we have guitar geeks, I'm a guitar geek. Nick is a capo geek. He's like even more niche. Uh, so I wanted to give you a sneak peek into our conversation. Uh, Nick very directly addressed both the questions I had and it's just his passion for his product came through and I just, uh, I have even more respect and regard for G7th capos now because I think Nick is just a, a top notch dude and um, really knows his stuff and cares about the product that he makes. So let's have a look, a little sneak peek into the uh, conversation that Nick, I, Nick and I had about the G7th Heritage Capo. You raised a couple of issues. Do you want me to go straight into those? Yeah, I mean, I, I would love to talk. I don't want to take, I don't know how much time you have, so I don't want to put any pressure on you one way or another. As much as you like. I've okay. got my glass of wine, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> We can talk as long as you care to. Let's, uh, yeah, let's hit, because yeah, the, the two ones that I, the two issues I should say, uh, the first of which was kind of that, that kind of, I've got the cable here, the, the just a little subtle amount of play there, which okay. kind of, I think I mentioned in the show, it was, I mean, I, I feel like I'm, I'm really splitting hairs here, but I wanted to ask just because I was curious. Let me tell you what it's about. If you, if you take a nail, you'll find there's a, there's a lip there. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I can show it to you better on, on this fella. <laughs> um, and so there's a little bit of movement so that that locks in, so that when that's locked in, this doesn't come loose when you're playing. Oh, gotcha. the job. Okay. Um, but that means, of course, that you have to have a little bit of play there so that this can open that away. Of course, when you, when you tighten up, Everything goes solid. Right, right. I did notice that. Yeah, it should all be uh, absolutely fine when you when you when you tighten up. It, all the all the pressures pulling the thing apart. So yeah, yeah. It just tightens up, and well, we think tone is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other one was um, the little uh, insert in yeah. here. Well, that's actually just a, a bearing, just just a little bearing to make the movement of the stem smooth. Okay. So, um, actually, um, uh, can you see that? Oh yeah, for sure. So you can see there the the, the colored in part about there uh -huh. is that little bearing. Oh no, kidding! And the 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 screw thread is inside here. Oh. Um, so that the, that's never going to wear out, you know. It's just it's, it's just there to make smooth movement. I got you. That's awesome. So if I show you that, I don't know if that gets in focus, but that's the screw thread, and there's a screw thread up inside. Okay. I got gotcha. you. That's really incredible, actually. <laughs> that's pretty genius. Well, the the screw thread is uh, about the same sort of screw um, pitch as a, as well, most of the others, the Elliot, the uh, Shelf and so on. Sure. So you get a similar amount of adjustment per turn. Nice. The and then I just wanted to show you, um, this is the, the ART with the, um, uh, with the rubber attached. And that just literally slots up into the, capo there. <laughs> the replacement of that is really simple. Nice. All right, pretty cool. It, it was just, you know, Noah and I were both really surprised because Noah's like, dude, guess who emailed us? He's like, Nick. And I'm like, Nick who? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he went on to, to share with me who it was and, and that he'd love to hop on a call and we got a chance to do the video call thing. So it was it was great to meet Nick and it was great to have that discussion. And Noah even popped in because we were both kind of just, I don't know, we were, we were kind of, we were fanboys a little bit, I think. Yeah, a little bit. Is that bit. accurate? I mean, we, I was. Well, yes, because we we were talking, I think we mentioned it in the show. Before the show, we were talking like, we should just, you should just ask him the question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how awesome would that be? If he actually answered the question, well, it wasn't. It wasn't and a we. Sh it wasn't a we should just do it. Noah was like, "You should ask him the question." So right. I, I would give major credit to Noah uh, in this regard because he's the one that made that all go down. Noah was the lead domino. Well, shucks. Thank so you, Noah. Tony. Even though you drink scotch, I think you're a swell chap. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I love the comments that are like, leave Noah alone, don't pick on him. <laughs> but we're like brothers. I mean, we, you know, True. usually as we wrap up the day here at the Acoustic Life Studios, we play some darts and things get heated. So it's, it's pretty good. Speaking of darts, I, I want to just quickly take an aside, Noah, and I want to have a chat with you. Okay. Do you realize that we've got two very important episodes of Acoustic Tuesday on the horizon? Yes. Do you understand? Yes. My, I'm, I'm, so I'm guessing, one, because of the... Well, can I say it? Can I talk about yeah, it? Yeah, you could absolutely talk about it. Okay. Well, one, because we have to do a recap of the Acoustic Life Festival. Correct. And then two, because of episode 52. So it's like a year. It's a year. Year of Acoustic Tuesday. It's the year anniversary. Yes. Otherwise known as the anniversary of Acoustic Tuesday. <laughs> but seriously, uh, so folks, I want you to mark your calendars. All of you guitar geeks out there, uh, tell your guitar geek friends, and please, uh, uh, let's try and unite as many guitar geeks as possible. Um, so please, please, first of all, share the show with them. If, if you know a guitar geek who hasn't seen Acoustic Tuesday, who hasn't experienced Acoustic Tuesday, guitar geeked him at, at, its, at its pinnacle, please share this show with them. Send them a link to your favorite episodes. Send them a link to the AcousticLife.tv site, which has everything that I've ever talked about on Acoustic Tuesday. Tuesday on it. Um, please, please share the show because really the more guitar geeks we unite, the better. And we're coming up on a year. It's been a year of Acoustic Tuesday. Episode 52 is right around the corner. So mark your calendars for that because that one is going to be one you don't want to miss. It's possible there'll be darts. It's possible there'll be cake. It's possible there'll be candles. And it's possible that may require a fire extinguisher. I'm not uh, entirely sure what's going to happen, but it's going to be celebration. And I'm sure there's going to be bourbon. I'm actually 100% sure, maybe 110%. And also, I want you to mark your calendars because episode number 49, which is going to air on July 31st, is going to be focused 100% on the Acoustic Life Festival that happened in Bozeman back in June. Uh, there's a lot of awesome footage, pictures, behind-the-scenes footage that I want to include everyone in on. So uh, please mark your calendars and stay tuned for that. Um, but Noah, I, I'm, I'm kind of taking up your small win time. And I want to I want to celebrate small wins. And I'm sorry, but I'm also excited at the same time. Don't apologize. You don't okay. have to apologize. So sh shall we? Can, we? can we do small wins? Let's dive into the ocean that is small wins. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, and there we are. We got our Small Winds banner, and we're good to go. All right, so Small Winds rolling in from uh, previous Acoustic Tuesday. First one comes from Yay Guitar. <laughs> That's the best screen name ever. <laughs> Yay Guitar. Yay Guitar. And Yay Guitar says... Due to Tony's finger picking lessons, I'm now able to complete the full landslide song with zero errors. Capo on third fret. Heck yeah. Nice job. Congratulations. It's a hell of a small win. Next one comes from Diver4625. Was that the ocean reference earlier that? No. You... Oh. See, I don't even plan ahead. Oh, it's it just... everything's in sync. Exactly. The guitar geek stars are aligned. It's serendipitous. I want to it's... look up one day. And I want to see a D45 constellation in my Guitar Geek world. I know, that was All really right. bad. <laughs> so, back to Small Winds. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Diver4625, 42 years ago, I played the banjo, but let life get in the way and put it down. Recently, with an empty nest, I decided to pick up the guitar and banjo. So, looking around the house, there it was, the banjo. It still plays perfectly. Stored in a nice hard case the whole time. I did put new strings on it, even though the 40-plus-year-old strings did tune. <laughs> okay? Uh, P.S. I want to know what brand strings those were. <laughs> P.S. In the case is the original handwritten receipt from Sam Ash in New York from April 1976, where I spent 479 bucks for banjo and case. That is awesome. That's I cool. I love that. Yeah. Uh, if, if any of you guys have stories like that out there that are watching, like handwritten receipt stuff, original hang tag stuff, that is guitar geek. That is pure guitar geek fuel. So please share those with us. Sorry, I, I'm just like, I'm really there today. It's okay. I'm in the zone. And our last <laughs> small win for today, Tony, comes from GW, uh, regular Acoustic Tuesday viewer and commenter. Small win, I, I play on my front porch in the afternoons. My neighbor next door and across the street came over to listen to me practice. We had a great time. That's awesome. That, that is way cool. That is cool. I want to live there. That's, see, I, that's kind of the life I've 
I've dreamt about in my head. Yeah. You know, where you're on the porch, you got the, my grandparents had rocking chairs on their porch out in their farm in Northern Louisiana. Um, but just that whole community neighborhood thing yeah. where everybody's like out, they know each other totally. and they're whatever, you know, having a beer, playing some music, Love kids it. are, kids are playing, you know, around the <laughs> houses in the streets. Yeah. It's just so cool. That is awesome. Well, uh, is that is that the that's wrap it for, for today, small wins? That's it. That's a wrap. Well, thank you, Noah, for sharing those. You read those in very well today. I thought. Thank I thought you. your enunciation was on par. I thought your pronunciation was fantastic, and just overall, your delivery was was uh, impactful. Good. That's the point. <laughs> that's what I want. Well, of course, if you want your small win read by Noah in an enunciated, pronunciated, impactful fashion, uh, please, please submit those in the comments below. Just hashtag small win and share your small win with us. It's really, we all, as guitar geeks on our guitar journeys, we all need positive momentum and small wins provide just that. It's a little check-in to say, hey, you know what? Things are going pretty awesome and I love playing guitar and I want to share this awesome moment. It could be a show. It could be your neighbors coming over and jamming. It could be a new guitar, new strings, whatever the case may be. Share it with us because we want to know and we'll feature you on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Now, speaking of being featured on Acoustic Tuesday, I've got two sets of, uh, two Duka, I got two guitar sonals <laughs> that I want to share with you all because uh, uh, th I thought these were great pictures and uh, I just can't wait to share them with you. So let's kick things off. I've got uh, my, the first guitar sonal up here. It comes from Lauren G. Now I know that you're going to say something's missing here and I'll, I'll comment on that here at the end because it's a very serious issue we need to address. But I wanted to feature this guitar arsenal for a very specific reason. Um, and in fact, as I read this, I want you to ponder why I wanted to feature this. So we have from Lauren G of San Jose, California, we have in the upper row a 1986 Guild JF30, a 2004 Martin Mahogany 0015, a 1976 Alvarez AD41712, a 1969 Yamaha Red Label F180, and a Lawsuit Suzuki 3 Star. In the lower row, we've got a 2018 Martin D41 and a 1986 Gretsch Rancher. Recently added, but not pictured, is a Flint Hill Resonator guitar. And I will make the comment, Noah brought this up, I saw this as well, is that every single guitar in this guitar arsenal has an armrest. So not, not only does Lauren have amazing taste in guitars, Lauren clearly wants to be comfortable. So that was a pretty cool thing that I noticed, but I also noticed one thing that was missing. It was Lauren and, and the guitar arsenal shirt that's required to be featured. But I just wanted to use this as a quick reminder that if you want to submit your guitar arsenal, it's really easy. Three simple steps. All you have to do is go to AcousticLife.tv. In the top menu, there's a submit button. You can submit your guitar arsenal there. And all you have to do to submit that guitar arsenal picture is get yourself a guitar arsenal shirt, order your favorite size and color. There's a link right beneath the show. And of course, take a picture with that shirt on with your guitars and anybody that's involved in your guitar journey. It could be family members, it could be pets, whatever the case may be. And of course, submit it at that link that I just described. Right when you go to AcousticLife.tv, there's a submit link in the top menu. Just click submit and go ahead and hit Guitar Arsenal, and voila, you'll be featured in an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Now, I've got one more Guitar Arsenal for you, and I've had the absolute pleasure of meeting both of these individuals featured in this picture. We've got Bill J and Susanna, his daughter Susanna, actually, from Herndon, Virginia. Hopefully I said that right. I've never heard of that. Herndon of that. Um, <laughs> we've got Bill and Susanna J, and in their guitar arsenal picture, we've got the following, a Breedlove Solo 12 string, which I had a chance to check out that guitar in person. It's gorgeous. It's got a sound port in the side. Really beautiful guitar. Uh, an Epiphone Dot, a Fender Squire Strat, and a Waterloo WL14L. That is a cool guitar because it's ladder braced, and I love ladder braced guitars. I think that's m amazing. Also shown, we've got a clarinet, and a Honer accordion, along with uh, ukuleles, a five foot six Yamaha grand piano, a cello, a dulcimer, and an R.W. Jameson banjo. And he also says in this, I was joined in the photo by my late faithful companion, Django. And there's an earlier note in the message here that says Django always sang with woodwinds. So I wanna thank Bill and Susanna for sharing your guitar arsenal with us. And I also wanna send our condolences from Acoustic Tuesday Studios, Acoustic Life Studios, uh, because um, we're big time dog lovers here and uh, well it's just a sad moment when you lose a, a, a furry friend so our condolences to you and thanks for sharing your guitar arsenal with us and of course as I mentioned before if you want to share your guitar arsenal follow those three easy steps and go to acousticlife.tv and submit it to be featured on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday
Now I'm almost ready to wrap up the show, but there's an experiment that I've been undergoing recently and it's a pick experiment. Okay, so I, for the longest time, just used Dunlop Altex 2.0 Sharp. That, that was it, that's what I used and I didn't even question anything. Then all of a sudden the Acoustic Tuesday show was born just shy of a year ago and I started trying out all of these picks and I quickly discovered that, you know what, I like other picks too and that's okay. And oftentimes I would try different materials, different shapes, but they'd be from all these different brands, right? And I just was curious about what specifically what the shape of a pick had, what influence it had on tone. And this is where V picks comes in. V picks of Nashville, Tennessee, made by Vinny Smith. Uh, the <laughs> Vinny makes okay. If you go to the VPix website, you can get there through AcousticLife.tv. Click on episode 48, you'll see a link, a full review of the VPix, and then also a link to get to Vinny's site. Um, Vinny offers, I think, the most shapes I've ever seen from any pick manufacturer. Uh, truly, I mean, we're talking, every, I, I, I'm astounded at some of the shapes. Uh, shapes, uh, we've got, let's see, there's the EKG, there's the stiletto, the chicken picker, the mummy, the black hole, the jalapeno, the euro, I mean, and the list goes on. There's so many different shapes and styles of picks, but they're all made out of this, this cast acrylic, which is a really cool substance. Now, if for, for my experimenting, I tried two different kinds of picks. I tried, uh, the first one I tried was the green one, the jalapeno, which I meant to bring in today, but it's actually on the headstock of one of the guitars I have at home. My Gibson SJ has a jalapeno pick stuck on it. Um, and then I tried two versions of the Euro pick, uh, both the clear acrylic and the uh, kind of a smoky black acrylic. And I, of, of those picks that I tried, I really enjoyed the jalapeno because uh, it just had great surface area and I had great control and accuracy with it. Um, now, these V-picks, I only tried a, a small, small percent of what's offered. Like I said, there are so many shapes that, that Vinny has made and different, different thicknesses, but it's all this clear cast acrylic material, which now my only experience with acrylic material was uh, a couple episodes ago, I, I featured these Diodario Acrylux picks, right? And I thought, okay, acrylic picks, this is, this is what I'll get. No, 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 I think they're two different materials. The Dear Dario Acrylux pick is much softer than what Vinny uses, V picks, what, what they use. Um, so it contributes, it's, there's a little flex there and it's a little bit of a duller tone. Not a bad tone, just a duller tone. It's, it's just different things, not good or bad. With the V picks, now I'm choosing the Euro here, uh, I noticed that the material was much, much stiffer. And I thought that really issued a nice, uh, clear and articulate tone, but also brought warmth. So it was this cool uh, spot in the center of the tonal spectrum where you get the best of both worlds. You get a nice warm body of tone, but also this clear articulation. And I just, uh, hats off to Vinny at VPix because these things are really cool. Now, I didn't like the Euro so much, just mainly due to size. It was a little bit smaller and uh, I just had a hard time controlling it. Uh, but the jalapeno was, was the, my jam. I mean, I've, I've used that, I used that at a couple gigs and I thought, this is really rad. Um, uh, but, but speaking on that, uh, again, that's just a fraction of what's offered, a small percentage. There's so many different picks and, and I think Vinny does a great job of really trying to cater to every guitar player. But what I love is it's all the same material, material or a similar material. I mean, there's varied colors and things like that. And um, it's a real true experiment in how pick shape actually affects tone. So I would encourage you to, to check out V Picks. Um, there is something for everybody. There's a shape, a, a guitar pick shape for everybody. Uh, really, there's six, I think six pages of different guitar picks. So please check them out. Again, go to AcousticLife.tv episode 48 and check out the V-Picks review. You'll see a full-blown write-up and then uh, links to some of my favorite V-Picks so you can uh, see what I'm playing. Uh, so again, V-Picks, pretty awesome stuff and uh, a great story. Go on there. Uh, if you go on the V-Picks website, check out Vinny's story. I think it's pretty awesome. It's, uh, it's certainly inspiring as well. So that pretty much wraps up uh, episode number 48, it's nearly in the books, but we've got some business to attend to because we have to review your Guitar Geek trivia. You probably want an answer. You want answers. And I'm here to give you those answers, but very quickly, I'm gonna review your Guitar Geek trivia question. And it was, in what year did Martin Guitars officially introduce the M body shape, otherwise known as a quadruple O? 
Was it A, 1967, B, 1964, C, 1977, or D, 1984? Well, if you answered C, the year 1977, you were absolutely 100% correct. The M body shape was introduced in 1977, largely due to a very special guitar that was owned by David Bromberg and worked on by Matt Umanoff of Umanoff Guitars. David Bromberg, back in 1967, brought a Martin F7 archtop guitar to Matt Umanoff in need of a repair due to its smashed top. David wanted it converted to a flat top guitar. This idea came from Mark Silver, who in the earlier 1960s, via his guitar stores in Berkeley and New York, had the thought to take a 1930s Martin F9, a top-of-the-line archtop F-hole guitar that he found with a smash top, and convert it to a flat top guitar. This infamous guitar that David Bromberg had converted by Matt Umanoff in 1967 then became the shining example and reason Martin introduced the official M body size 10 years later in 1977. Some pretty awesome guitar lore there and, and Martin history and David Bromberg history. And I love when all the names collide. You got Matt Umanoff, David Bromberg, and Martin guitars all merged together to make this awesome body. The M body size, merge M. I don't know if that's what it stands for, but I like the line of logic. Uh, the M body size was actually also referred to as a quadruple O, as I mentioned in the question as well. So pretty cool trivia and something to uh, uh, quiz your guitar geek friends on. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, guitar geeks of all ages. Episode number 48 is nearly in the books. And my oh my, is episode 49 going to be reason to tune in? Okay, so let's take a sneak peek into next week. What's going to happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday? Well... I'm certainly glad you asked. Next week on Acoustic Tuesday, you're going to get a full rundown on the inaugural Acoustic Life Festival, complete with backstage footage, insider, insider video, and a report on just how much of an impact the festival made. You don't want to miss that. And you're not going to want to miss this episode because we'll also report on how much you all donated to Guitars for Vets through the AcousticLife.tv website during the month of June. So there's going to be many reasons to celebrate next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Thank you for joining us this week on Acoustic Tuesday from Noah and myself and us here in uh, Rainy Bozeman at Acoustic Life Studios. We thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing your time with us. And we cannot... We cannot wait to see you next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Of course, that airs Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on YouTube. And of course, for your fix in between Tuesdays, just go to AcousticLife.tv and check out all the reviews, the bonus footage, and all the cool Easter eggs waiting for you over there. And remember, please, that everything that you purchase through AcousticLife.tv, 100% of those proceeds goes to Guitars for Vets, which is a stellar cause helping guitar geeks unite in a whole different way, celebrating the healing power of music. So thanks again for tuning in this week, and we'll see you next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Cheers.